Yes, I bought this school bus. I have big plans for it, and today I'm going to tell you exactly what those plans are. First, let me tell you about the bus. This is a 2005 Thomas-built forward engine. It probably has a model name, but I don't know it or care about it. It weighs 18,000 pounds. It has a GVWR of 30,000 pounds. It is 8 feet wide, 10 feet tall, 40 feet long, and has an interior height of my height minus one inch. And up until I removed most of the seats, it could haul 84 short, sticky, stupid people, or children as most people like to refer to them. Speaking of deseatification, I've already blacked out the flashy blinky lights and removed the retractable stop sign, school bus markings, and most of the seats. This now means I don't have a fun retractable stop sign to play with, but as far as the law is concerned, this is no longer a school bus. Probably. Powering this massive metal bread loaf is a 7.2 liter Caterpillar C7 straight six diesel engine made it to an Allison something speed automatic transmission. I'd tell you how many gears it has, but I don't know. The Cat C7 engine series was available with a wide range of power options ranging from 210 to 360 horsepower with torque ranging from 520 to 925 fetal pounds. So given the massive size of my bus, it won't surprise you to learn that my engine is rated at 210 horsepower and 520 pound feet of torque the lowest of the whole range. To put that in perspective, here's my Fiesta ST. This massive bus has just 10 more horsepower than this, has two and a half times the torque, but it weighs six and a half times as much. Anyway, moving on. So, what did I pay for all of this glorious busciousness? $3,500. Yeah, $3,500 for a 40 foot long mobile building. And it's completely rust free, which is exceedingly rare for a Missouri bus. I've looked at older buses that cost twice as much that had crunchy steps they had so much rust. Shoot, I paid 5,000 for this thing and it didn't even come with a retractable stop sign. And now that you're familiar with this lovely bus of mine, it's about time I tell you what I plan to do with it because you know I didn't just buy an old school bus so I could drive around a massive bus while referring to myself as Captain Bob. Okay, maybe I did a little bit, but after I get that out of my system, here's what I'm going to do. I'll start by removing a good portion of the rear of the bus. Then the bus's old end cap will be brought forward to enclose what remains of the bus's cabin. And then, because there isn't enough headroom and I want to add lots of insulation, I'll be raising the roof of the bus's cabin by an as of yet undetermined amount. This new front section will be the living quarters, what for sleeping and pooping, and this back section will be an open deck car hauler long enough, in theory, to carry two smallish cars. Although this is bound to change, the lengths I have planned for these sections are 25 feet for the open deck car hauler section, 10 feet for the living quarters, and the remaining 5 feet of the bus is the driver station, engine hump, and staircase area. So that's the plan. I also have plans for the RV portion of the bus. Because I haven't chopped up anything and I don't know the final dimensions of the interior, I haven't fully fleshed out the layout, but I do have a set of requirements for the RV. They are as follows. It'll sleep at least two people. I'd like it to sleep more, but given my space limitations, I don't think that'll be possible. It'll have a full bathroom and a full shower. None of this wet bath nonsense. It'll be all electric, no propane. That includes the heater, the water heater in the stove, all electric. It'll have a mini split for heating and air conditioning. Mini splits are small, efficient, and easily run off even a small inverter. It'll have a battery pack large enough to run the mini split overnight non-stop, or thereabouts, roughly seven to eight kilowatt hours. It will not have a generator. The charging of the massive onboard battery pack will be done using the alternators on the existing gigantic engine. It may or may not have solar panels. I haven't decided if that's necessary yet. It will be fully dry dockable. I want to never visit a campground ever, except to maybe fill the fresh water tank. And finally, it'll be far more insulated than the stock bus. I'm thinking around three inches of insulation all around with an R value at least in the double digits. I've been planning this bus build in my head now for quite some time, which is why I picked this exact configuration of bus. For starters, it's front engine, so there's no engine in the back to get in the way of cars I might want to haul, 
on the load bay. It's a transit style bus, so the interior space goes from the front bumper all the way to the rear bumper. And as an added bonus, the wheelbase is shorter than most buses, making it more maneuverable. And it's an 84 passenger bus, which is just one row of seats shy of the longest bus they make. This length is what will theoretically allow me to haul two cars on the back, two smallish cars, and still have a fairly decent amount of space left over for living quarters. I did consider alternatives like converting an ambulance and pulling a car trailer with that, or converting a much cooler vintage bus like a flexible Starliner or a Crown Supercoach, but in the end, I picked what I picked. An ambulance would have been far more drivable than the bus I ended up getting, but it would have been a lot more restricted on the size of the living space. And at least with this bus, I don't have to worry about how many people died in it. A stylish vintage bus would have obviously been much cooler and more to my style than the school bus I ended up getting, but I wanted to make this a car hauler, and chopping up a vintage bus would be, well, it would be difficult, but more importantly, it would be a crime against humanity and style. And in the end, both of those options I just mentioned would require far more upfront cost than the $3,500 it took to buy this thing. Really, there's tons of options, each with their own pros and cons, but I chose to follow the yellow brick bus. At this point, or some point about five minutes ago, you may be thinking, those are some awfully big plans you got there. You can talk a big talk, but can you walk a big walk? Well, yes. And also, all the plans I've just mentioned are just that. They're plans. I promise nothing, and you should probably take everything I say with a grain of salt until it all materializes. I have no idea what sort of challenges I'll face along the way, how much my plans will change, or if I'll even complete this project at all. The only thing I know for sure is that this is a hugely ambitious project, and I couldn't be more excited about it. And now that I've cast adequate doubt on my abilities to complete this project, let me share with you the stretch goals for this build. These are things that will be outlandish, impossible, or just plain too expensive for me to do myself. The floor of this bus is very high off the ground. The easiest way to load up cars to this height would be to simply use a ramp, the length of Massachusetts. But what if instead I had a folding car lift mounted to the back of the bus? This would be an ideal solution, but rather obviously would require overcoming some significant engineering challenges. But rather than go into detail on those engineering challenges, I'll just let you think about it while I move on to the next stretch goal. The massive diesel engine in this bus can get it up to highway speeds, but once you reach a hill, it's game over. It's a bit like driving a Citroen 2CV that's the size of a building. Also, the engine has a limited rev range, it's loud, and in general, it's cumbersome and annoying. What if instead of a big diesel engine for the drive power, it had electric motors for the drive power? And powering those electric motors would be a smallish battery pack. And powering that smallish battery pack would be a massive generator that could be powered by anything. It could be a smallish diesel engine. It could be, well, the sky's the limit here. It could be a turbo shaft engine that could run off many different types of fuels. To be clear, the goal of this would have nothing to do with fuel economy and everything to do with the superiority of electric motors as drive power. Plus, you could use the onboard battery pack for the inverter for the RV portion. It would have regen braking, etc., etc. The benefits go on. Now, obviously, there's no way I could make this happen. First of all, I couldn't afford any of the components. The only reason I'm throwing this idea out there at all is because ideas are free. And who knows? Maybe some company out there like Rightspeed would want to develop something on this bus. Yeah, obviously, it's unlikely, but if I'm going to dream, I'm going to do it with grandiosity. Lastly, and this is really the only realistic goal of the bunch, I wanted an open deck car hauler so I can show off my cars to the world as I'm driving down the highway because it's not every day someone sees a Trabant strolling down the interstate on the back of a bus. But what if I'm hauling something valuable? Or what if I'm hauling something that I want to keep out of the rain? It would be nice if I had a folding soft roof system to cover the open load bay. That's really all I had to say about that. I told you it was the only realistic goal of the bunch. I think that's enough of my ridiculous stretch goals. Let's move on to the plans I have for video. I will, of course, be documenting the build of this bus on video, because that's what I do. But don't go expecting a huge series of videos week after week about this bus. I run a car channel, so I'm going to be treating this as a weekend side project. I mean, yeah, a massive weekend side project, but a weekend side project 
nonetheless. I'm going to be condensing these build videos down as much as I can to make the resulting videos as interesting and entertaining as possible without losing valuable information. I could milk this bus for hundreds of videos, but that's not the point of this project. The point is for me to repeat, but scale up, the immense sense of satisfaction I got from completing my first camper build. I'm doing this project for me, not to tap into some niche market for schooly content. So that is my bus and what I plan to do with it. I know some of you may be disappointed that I got a bus instead of a say a quirky French car like a Citroen GS or something. I was actually looking at a Peugeot 405 MI16 that was for sale in California before I bought this bus, but then I did a quick search for buses again like I had been doing occasionally, and this one popped up at that price. I've been planning and wanting to do this school bus conversion for years now. If you've ever talked to me in person, it's likely I've even told you about my plans to buy a school bus someday. But, like John Fogarty once said, someday never comes. So when the opportunity presented itself, I bought this school bus instead of the Peugeot. For now, anyway. Who knows, maybe after this thing is completed, I can use the completed bus to go pick up a different 405 in the future. Who knows, we'll see. Attention passengers, attention, this is your captain, Bob speaking. That's gonna do it for this video, so until next time,